Hi, welcome to Phil's Computer Lab. In this video, two iconic processors go head to head. The Intel Pentium 4 3.2 GHz and AMD's Athlon XP3200+. I will now show and analyze the benchmark results. I do recommend you continue watching this video, especially the last part beyond performance and conclusion, because there are important things to be aware of that affect compatibility and reliability that go beyond pure performance. So here are all the results. I benchmarked 3D Mark 2001 SE, 3D Mark 03, Aqua Mark 3 and Code Creatures. Also included are time demo results for Series Sam Second Encounter, Dune 3 and Fear. Looking at the overall picture, we can see that the Pentium 4 is the faster processor. Especially at low resolutions, it can lead up to 20%. However, nobody games at 640x480 and as we increase resolution, the gap narrows and at 1600x1200, there isn't much of a difference. In terms of gaming performance, it really doesn't matter which chip you go for, they both perform on a similar high level. Or put another way, if the AMD chip struggles with a game, the Pentium 4 isn't going to make much of a difference. In this section the two machines are showcasing popular Windows XP games. At the top left of the screen you can see what resolution the game runs at, as well as a frame rate counter. At the bottom left of the screen you can see an icon telling you what processor is being used. Well, end of the line. Welcome. Welcome to City 17. You have chosen, or have been chosen, to relocate to one of our finest remaining urban centers. I thought so much of City 17 that I elected to establish this, my it's administration. It's all I have left. Are you the only ones on that train? It was so all right, I'm moving. by our benefit. I've been proud to call City 17 my home. And so, whether you are here to stay or it's on, but they're passing always, through on your way to parts unknown, welcome to City 17. It's safer here. Dr. Breen again? I was hoping I'd seen the last of him in City 14.
finally arrived, but our records don't show from where. Great. I'm sure you'll fit right in. Follow me up to the office and they'll finish your release. Yes, we've been expecting you. Uh, you'll have to be recorded before you're officially released. There are a few ways we can do this, and the choice is yours. We can lay low, but my hands are all messed up. So you better drive, brother. shirt. I suggest you grab some body armor and cover it, or you'll be easily spotted. Hey, some good news. I'm picking you up much more strongly now. I suggest you search the huts for weapons and equipment. Stay low and avoid contact if possible. You don't really want to alert the guards. And this is the final part of the video where I have the opportunity to share my experiences of working with these two systems. Performance is important, but things such as compatibility and reliability are just as important. Let's start with the Pentium 4 system based around an A-Open Socket 478 motherboard with Intel's 865 chipset. The machine was a joy to work with. It is compatible with modern SATA 3 hard drives, boots from SATA optical drives and I didn't encounter any compatibility issues. Finding a decent socket 478 cooler is a bit of a challenge. The model I have from StarTech is rated at up to 2.8 GHz and after a while the 3.2 GHz processor would throttle down to protect itself from overheating. I didn't have much luck finding a decent aftermarket cooler, especially a brand new one. Looking at the Athlon XP3200 Plus system based around a Gigabyte Socket A motherboard with via KT600 chipset. Working with this machine I encountered a few challenges. Let's start with the power supply. Many Socket A motherboards do not come with the 12 volt power connector. In short, motherboards that do not have the 12 volt power connector draw most of the power from the 5 volt rail, whereas newer motherboards that do have the 12 volt power connector draw most of the power from the 12 volt rail. When you look at older and current power supplies, you will see the same pattern. All the power supplies are capable of supplying more current on the 5 volt rail. Here is an example of such a power supply. It is rated for 35 amps at 5 volts. Modern power supplies supply more current on the 12 volt rail and have a much weaker 5 volt rail, typically only supplying 15 amps on the 5 volt rail. The Athlon XP3200 Plus is the most powerful Athlon XP processor and draws the most power. When used in a motherboard which doesn't have the 12 volt power connector like the one I used, you should use an older power supply with a high current rating for the 5 volt power rail. The other option is going with a newer Socket A motherboard 
which does have the 12 volt power connector. I might be doing a video on one of those in the future. Another issue I ran into has to do with the SATA controller. It can only operate with SATA 1 hard drives. This means the newest drive you can use are SATA 2 drives, which have a jumper that limits the SATA interface to SATA 1 standard. The issues with the SATA controller don't stop there. While I was able to start the boot process from the SATA optical drive, it would just hang after a while and I ended up just using an IDE optical drive instead. The final issue I ran into seems to be some sort of software incompatibility between 3 d Mark 3 and the Athlon XP processor. The benchmark would crash during the nature sequence exactly at the same spot. I did try another motherboard with a different chipset, but it did exactly the same thing. If you happen to know something about this, please let me know in the description. And that's it for this video. I'm looking forward to a good discussion in the description. What machine did you have in the old days and what are your experiences? If you like this video and want to see more, please subscribe to my channel, share this video with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus and Reddit, hit that like button and leave a comment down below.